Kuya, Pita, and Sophie. This time, under the pines. Mama! I think we're more exhausted. What is going on? Welcome under the pines. The mighty Yukon River lies dark and cold. The sun long gone below the horizon. Wolf and bear prowl through the deep shadows on the hunt for an easy meal. As the darkness deepens, northern lights faintly glow in the sky above our camper as we roll north. I'm tired and soon fall into bed. But Peter keeps driving through the night. The aurora borealis stands powerfully across the starry sky and we keep going for a while longer. The next morning, we keep driving. And soon make it to Dawson City. The famous town of gold and glory at the confluence of the Klondike and the Yukon River. At first glance, not much has changed here since 1900. Roads are left unpaved, buildings are crooked and squeaky. Twisted boardwalks lead through town. This is where the Klondike Gold Rush took place. 1898, this little town was also known as the Paris of the North. I wanted the gold and I sought it. I scrabbled and mucked like a slave. Was it for me no scurvy I fought it? I hurled my youth into a grave. I wanted the gold and I got it. Came out with a fortune last fall. Yet somehow life's not what I thought it, and somehow the gold isn't all. 30,000 people called Dawson their home. Today only 1,500 are left, and life knows a different pace. Wooden cabins and old cars line the sides of the dusty roads. On the graveyard, tired bones of gold miners and fortune seekers find the last refuge and wooden crosses date back to 1897, when famine and scurry claimed so many lives in the unforgiving northern wild. In the evenings, locals and tourists alike flock to the pit. A crooked patchwork of different buildings 
It houses a weird tavern alive with the spirit of the old times. I can do an imitation of a man who's feeling good. I can talk a lot like someone. If these walls could only tell us the things they've seen. I can go to all the places where the happy people stay. But without you here beside me, I'm an actor on the stage. And finally, we retreat in our tiny home park just around the corner. and fall into bed while life in the streets around us slows down and finally total silence settles over this unique place. At three in the morning, the cold creeps into our RV and I start a little fire in our stove. When the sun rises in the morning, the town lies sleepy. We all just dance up on a hill. Mist rolls down from the surrounding mountains. Up and down and into the light and into the dark, determine a walk or a lost heart. And we've forgotten about that rain. And even a lonesome gopher comes out of his den. That rain, she's coming. To hold the line. And while Peter prowls through the streets with his camera in his hands, Kato and I sleep until the sun pokes through the fog. Mama. Mama. It feels like we are living in a John Wayne movie. The whole town is like that. There's no real sidewalk, it's just these boardwalks and uh, no um, paved roads. It's a super cool, interesting town. We love wandering the streets and keep doing so for hours.
there are a lot of abandoned cabins here in Dawson. They are from whoever built them back then. <laughs> and um, they're still here, but nobody lives in there. Yeah, every house, every cabin looks super cool and unique and different and it's very, it's fun walking through the town and um, looking at all the, the cool houses. It is easy to imagine how life used to be during the golden era of this town as so many buildings are still standing and the ghosts of the past still linger. Like back in the days of trappers and miners, the Dawson trading post still carries much of the same equipment as trapping and mining continue to play an important part for the economy of Dawson. Browsing the store feels like taking a trip with a time machine. Water? Show that water? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> wow. We are having a pizza at the back alley. It's a very tiny pizza place in Dawson. Are you hungry? Um, we are hungry. Hungry? We are more... I don't know, I'm not really hungry, but I am a little bit hungry and we are, I think we're more exhausted from walking through town. So we're just having a little break, having a pizza. Ham ham? Ham ham As evening comes, it is time for the screening of Peter's movie, Kings of the North. The show is very well attended and a big success. After the show, we head down to the Yukon River in the fading light. And watch the George Black Ferry carrying trucks and people across the murky waters of the powerful river. The ferry operates 24 hours and is the lifeline connecting the west side of the river with town and the rest of the world. Home to a vibrant community itself, many locals from West Dawson also cross the cold waters with their private boats. For many people around the world, Alaska and the Yukon are synonymous with Jack London. Author of such renowned books as Call of the Wild and Wild Fang, he took much of his inspiration for these stories from his one-year period up in the Yukon. Masterfully, he captures the soul of the North like no other. When the long winter nights come on and the wolves follow their meat into the lower valleys, he may be seen running at the head of the pack through the pale moonlight or glimmering borealis. Leaping gigantic above his fellows, his great throat, a bellow as he sings a song of the younger world, which is the song of the pack.
We try to imagine how life must have been for Jack London. It sure must have been miserable in this tiny cabin. Roughly built and badly insulated, it takes cabin life to a whole other level. Even though we live in the Yukon now for seven years, we never really took the time to discover the history of the gold rush. But somehow, we are just in the mood today. And after Jack London's cabin, we head to the Museum of Dawson. The cry for gold in the far north captivated the world at the beginning of the 20th century. Even Donald Duck headed out for his share of the warm, glimmering fortune. I also used the opportunity to practice my skills as a judge with a little cheeky twist. As the day comes to an end, we head out to the ferry to leave Dawson behind. For now, another adventure awaits us in the mountains. Thank you so much for watching our vlog. We hope you liked it. And if so, please subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot, it helps our channel a lot, and um, just subscribe. Yes, and also <laughs> like this video if you enjoyed watching it. Yes, please. Thank you, button is down here. Yes. We really appreciate that. And then we also get a notification about you, because you used the thank you button, you know? Yes. We updated our Patreon page, so head over to our Patreon page and uh, maybe you can find something that you like. We have seven new tiers and um, I think you can find something. Everybody can find something. <laughs> and um, yeah, become part of our Patreon family. Yes, we also have to say thank you to all our new patrons. <laughs> thank you so much. It wouldn't be possible without you. Like, you guys are amazing we love you and we love your support and it's just amazing yes thank, thank you, you so much. much we really love you and we hope you are doing good doing great and you enjoyed your summer because yes. now summer is over and um, yeah hopefully see you next time see you next time <laughs>